Everyone likes to be confident. It's good to have confidence in yourself. And it's also good to have positive reinforcement. I've never thought of myself as the sexiest man alive, although I could be, but I don't think of myself that way. However, I do think of myself as attractive, and I owe that in no small part to Muhammad Ali. Here's what happened. When I was a kid and I first had an awareness of the heavyweight champion of the world, I always knew because my dad used to go to watch the fights on closed circuit television. And they would always be at like 11 o'clock at night, a time when I could never go and he would have to go late because it was a time zone difference where the fight wasn't necessarily on East Coast time because, well, the champion of the world was fighting all over the world. so it would be at an unusual time. And there wasn't pay-per-view, you couldn't watch it on television, generally speaking, so when there was a big fight, you just knew about it. And everybody knew the champion was Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali's passing shook the world, just as he did when he burst onto the scene, when he beat Sonny Liston, his passing shook the world in the same way. You know, what's interesting is I kept watching the tributes and I am a huge Ali fan, but every time I watched the tribute, I learned something new. I didn't know he saved a man from committing suicide. And then there are the pictures. Really? I didn't know his was the only star on the Walk of Fame that's not on the ground because you will not walk on the Prophet Muhammad's name. Didn't know that. There were so many things that I learned I could go on and on. But I want you to know how much Muhammad Ali meant to me. Years ago, my family owned a chocolate manufacturing firm and my dad had gotten together with the other executives at the company and they were contemplating the sale of a Muhammad Ali chocolate bar. This is my dad, the champ, and the vice chairman of our company, Lynn Halbert, and the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. And if you look closely in his hand, the champ is holding a Muhammad Ali bar. That was from our company. The sales didn't go big. It's a long story of why our, well, commercial company wasn't really built for retail sales. But it was a cool meeting. It was a cool idea. And Ali liked the fact that he was dealing with a black owned business and a black man to try to bring about a Muhammad Ali chocolate bar. It's a really cool experience. There are a few other pictures where you can't have Ali without him boxing and mixing it up with the young lady here in the office and the former president of our company, Joseph Kaufman. There's some great shots. They all had a good time. Why not? It's not like Ali didn't like to have a good time and get a little business done at the same time. But I can tell you, as big a fan as I was of Ali, when I, I was brought to tears as a kid when he was losing his final fight to Larry Holmes and Larry Holmes was signaling the ref to come in while he was beating him. I'm like, ah, stop, it's Ali, it's my champ. I've only been starstruck twice in my life. The very first time, I'm a young actor, I'm out here in Hollywood, and I'm at the Laker game in the Forum Club. Now you had to think, back in the day, Forum Club was the spot to be in. Some folks went to the Forum Club, didn't even go inside to look at the game, because they were too busy being Hollywood in the Forum Club. That wasn't me. I was sitting in the box with Jerry Buss. I was really Hollywood. but. That's another story. The real story was while I was sitting in the forum club, it was always packed. People were inside, you know, hustling and bustling. And then all of the sudden, the crowd began to part like the Red Sea. I couldn't see what was happening. I was like, what's the big deal? And lo and behold, here comes Muhammad Ali. And I was like, it's the champ. I just, I, I was frozen. He just kind of walked and he kind of waved at people as he walked by and people reached. I was frozen. I mean, he walked right in front of me and I couldn't even move, couldn't talk, I couldn't say anything. I was literally starstruck. I couldn't believe there he was right in front of me. Once he left and I guess somebody kicked me for just you know, taking up space. I thought, man, I blew my opportunity. I couldn't, I couldn't say anything to Muhammad Ali, but it was Muhammad Ali. Years later, there was a, a tribute 
to Richard Pryor. Everybody was there. Eddie Murphy, the Wayans, pick, I don't know, pick a big name of anybody who was somebody in entertainment. They were all there for this tribute to Richard Pryor. It was at, I think, the Beverly Hills Hotel. As a matter of fact, Keenan, when he was making his presentation to Richard, said that he had actually never met him and came down off the stage just to say hello to Richard Pryor. An amazing night. After the program had finished, I was in a conversation with Tommy Hitman Hearn. Yes, me and the Hitman were having a conversation. We were chatting it up and lo and behold, Muhammad Ali is standing off to the side. I said, Tommy, do me a favor. Introduce me to Ali. <laughs> and Tommy was so cool, he was like, sure. And he pulled him over, he was like, Chant, this is Daryl Bell. And Muhammad Ali turned and looked at me. And I was like, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I, 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 you know, and I was trying to talk and what have you. And then Ali just kind of leaned into me. And then he said, I want to do this. I said, what? Didn't really hear him. He leaned over right in my ear and he said, I like your suit. You? You like my suit? You like my suit? That is the greatest compliment of all time. He leaned over again. You pretty. Stop it. What the? Come on. What? Did, did you? <laughs> it said, Muhammad Ali just said, I'm pretty. Oh, that's what he called himself. And he called me pretty. How? Who? I said, I could, that's the greatest of all. T and he shook my hand and he kind of patted me on and we just kind of smiled up and said it's so nice and then somebody else started talking but it was a it was a moment. We he didn't rush. It wasn't like it was just unbelievable for me. I'm talking unbelievable for me. What's so good is when you hear all of these people talk of these stories when they met Muhammad, you know, when Parkinson's had kind of taken over and he hadn't really been talking as much. For him to have still been able to express how he felt to me at the time, just, it's one of the indelible memories of my life. Now, years later, somebody would come up to me and I told them this story and they said, yeah, he told everybody, you pretty. That was his thing. Why are you trying to bust my bubble? I don't understand. Why are you trying to bust my bubble? Muhammad Ali liked my suit and thought I was pretty. Me. Nobody else. Get a grip. Frankly, I don't care. I don't care if he said that to everybody. I don't care if instead of saying hello, he told everybody, I like your suit and you're pretty. Because he said it to me. He looked me in my eye and whispered in my ear and told me. That was it. Years later, myself, Kadeem, my friend Matt, some other friends, we were all having dinner at Mirabelle's restaurant on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. And it was the night of the 96 Olympics. And we were all watching the opening ceremonies. We were having dinner. And then Muhammad Ali came out to light the Olympic torch. When I tell you, everyone in the restaurant stood up and began to applaud. We all just, it was, it was as if we were all in the Olympic arena and it was magical. It had the, no one else could have quite that effect on a group of strangers. All, we're, we're all dining, we're all kind of watching and passing until Muhammad Ali showed up on the screen. It's another reason Muhammad Ali will never die because those memories and that impact that he had on me and everyone around me, that was a lifetime well spent. I mean, Ali was internet famous before there was an internet. I mean, when you talk about who's globally famous, there are few people who could go around the world and everybody know who they are. That was Ali. When I think about why I was starstruck, why I was so thrilled to talk to him myself, why I was so moved by his appearance at the Olympics. That was a man who lived his life and it was purpose-driven. 
He was imperfect. He had plenty of faults, some of which he acknowledged openly. That's not a newsflash. I think when, when, you, when you talk about living by your convictions and living a life of principle and purpose, Ali did that. We'd all do well to try to live our lives in the same way. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a like, leave a comment. Um, hit the subscribe button, which should be right about there. I think, yeah, that's probably about right, close to that. Share this video with your friends. What I'm really worried about is telling a good story and getting my lighting better. I'm working on my lighting. I, the lighting's gotta improve. I'm almost at 100 subscribers. That's a big number. Things are gonna change around here when I hit 100 subscribers. Whoop, whoop. And until next week, Thursday, I'm out. I'm dropping the mic if I actually had a mic. I don't really have a mic because the mic's on the camera. But if I had a mic, I would be like, whap. See ya.